Hi guys, welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be talking through my editing process and specifically showing how I stack in Zareen Stacker. Before I even get into Zareen Stacker, I import my photos into Lightroom Classic and organize them, edit them, and then once I've got all the images, I import them into Zareen Stacker. Uh, let me just show you the process of how I organize the files. So I've got this image here, which I'm going to be focus stacking today. Um, it's a crab spider. This one I actually found uh, at the back of my garden. It was a dead one. So I thought, you know, a good test subject for this video. The first thing I do is find the image with the eyes in focus. Let me go full screen and I'm just going to flick through them and find the one that's got the eyes in focus. This one looks perfect. So. Once I've got that, I'm going to develop and I'm just going to edit the photo. I usually put a bit of clarity in, put the brightness up. When I'm adjusting my photos, I look at the histogram up here. So when I was doing the exposure there, I'm looking at how close this is getting to the end. I don't want it to go over that. Um, now the highlights are looking a bit bright, so I'll bring those down. It's looking a, like it's got not much contrast, so I'll put the dehaze up to about 10, put the contrast up to about 10. Then I usually do a little bit of an S curve in the curves. Every photo is different, but this photo is a great example for how I edit. And it could do with a little sat saturation as well. The leaf is quite desaturated. And here I'm just masking the sharpness so the sharpness isn't applying to the background. Then I usually go with a sharpening between 50 and 70. Uh, 60 seems to be the sweet spot. And then I have a little play with the calibration sometimes, but this photo, mm, yeah, I could do a little bit. As you can see, that's added more contrast between the green and the orange of the bug. And then I sometimes bring the hue of the red to the left. And then I can saturate the green as you can see, that's just added some nice contrast and made the colors look a bit more natural. They said it seems to be fine. I don't want to go overboard with it. So once I've got my image edited, uh, go back into library. I'm just going to rate that five stars. So I know it's the one with the eyes in focus. Copy the settings, check all, copy. Come up to the first one. So this one is focused on the tip of that hair there. What I usually do is try and find the last image. So so this, I've came a few images to the left and this one seems to have a little more in focus. So I think this one will be the last image. Um, and then what I want to do there, rate that five stars so I know it's the last image. And then scroll all the way up to the first one, shift, click on that, selects all of them. I'm just going to deselect this one because it's already got the edit applied to it. And then I'm going to right click, develop settings, paste settings. Okay, so all the edits applied to all the images. And now I'm just going to select all of them, including this one. And then right click, export. And I usually have a folder on my desktop because I've got a M.2 SSD, so it works a lot faster at editing rather than using the slow hard drives, which I store the images on. Um, and these are my export settings, so usually I export as a TIFF, sRGB, 16 bits, uh, I've unchecked all that. I've changed this to 300 um, pixels per inch. I've unticked sharpening because I do that in Photoshop later. And export. That's 116 images there, so that's quite a big stack. While this exports, I just want to talk about what I'm actually editing on. So as you can see, that's my PC. Uh, it's just like a custom built Windows PC. Um, a lot of photographers use Mac and Apple products. Um, I have used Apple. I just, because I've used Windows for so long, I just can't really switch. For the monitor, I've also got a, it's like a gaming monitor, but it's got quite accurate colors. It's got like 99% sRGB or something. So here's all the images, they're all TIFFs. There is two modes here, there's P 
Pmax and Dmap. These are different algorithms that will work around focus stacking your image. They'll have different results. Pmax usually is optimized for uh, sharpness. It often gives like desaturated colors and not very accurate colors. I think I've only used that like once or twice really. 99% of the time I'll be using Dmap as it maintains the color range and color accuracy. You might have to do a little more retouching, but it does a very good job still. So now I've clicked that, what it's doing is automatically aligning and stacking every single image one by one. As you can see on the left, it's scrolling through all my images that I've uh, imported. And on the right, it's showing you a live preview of the stack happening. All right, that probably took about a couple of minutes. So as you can see on the loading bar, it's halfway and what it's doing now is asking us to set the contrast threshold. Now what this is, is basically telling us to determine the contrast between out of focus and focus. So everything in black, you wanna have be the out of focus parts. So as you can see, all this foreground is out of focus. So I want all that to be black. As you can see, there's a little bit on the face. Uh, so I'm gonna come back a tiny bit and that looks perfect. If there is a bit on the bug, that is a part that's in focus. So 87.8 seems fine. I'm gonna click OK. So now set the contrast threshold. It's gonna stack the images again and it should have a good result, hopefully. So the stack is complete, but the stacking is not done there. If I zoom in, as you can see behind the hairs, it's blurry and there's a bit of an error there. A uh, bit of an error there, error here, a uh, bit of a mess there. And every image is different, every stack is different. A lot of the time around hairs on the uh, edge of insects or bugs, it's uh, quite hard for the software to work out what is sharp and what's not sharp. So what you want to do, go into edit, start, actually before I do that, I save my project in case the software crashes or something. Um, so I'm just going to name it test stack as this is a sort of demonstration that's saved. Then I'm going to go edit, start retouching. And I found this retouching a bit complicated when I first started the software, but it's actually really easy. So obviously you've got all your images here. This is the first one it goes all the way down to the last one. When I'm retouching, I like to start with the last image actually, because if I paint this in, then I want to paint, for example, this leg in. That will be over the image I just fixed here. So like this, and then I want to paint that over the top of what I've just fixed. So that means there's like a clean overlap when I'm retouching. I'm just going to go through the areas where it's obviously gone wrong. And then once I've done that, I'll probably do some little fine details that need fixing. So while I'm actually um, editing, I press spacebar to move around the image like this. And then while I'm holding spacebar, space bar, I can zoom in and out with the scroll wheel, which is a nice little shortcut. So this one seems to be the edge. So I'm gonna paint that in right there. And then I'm gonna fix this leg. I don't usually have, so it's a bit of a tedious process. Um, the better you get the stacking camera, the better the software will deal with your stack. But not all, you know, insects are staying still. Um, and sometimes you might have an error, you know, you might knock your hand or something, or the camera might shake a little bit. And then the bug might fly away and you won't get another chance to photograph it. So this is what this software is for. It's for retouching and getting the stack perfect. Now you could be here all day retouching this. And while, um, while you are retouching, think about what is necessary to retouch. Because I often spend way too much time retouching because I'm not actually thinking about what needs retouching. Like if you zoom out, the obvious thing that is a problem is this area and sort of this area. So those areas are what needs fixing. But if you zoom in even further, you can notice like tiny little imperfections like this and this. And those aren't as important because you won't notice them. Or well, at least you will, but people won't notice them when they view the image. But it really depends how much time you want to spend in here. So that looks clean enough now, just for this demonstration. Uh, once I'm done with retouching, go edit, commit retouching. And I don't always do all the retouching in one go. What I do is I click uh, commit retouching a few times, 
just in case it um, crashes because if you don't commit retouching and your software crashes then you'll lose all of it which is a bit annoying I wish you could save while in retouching but you have to come out of it click save and then go back into retouching but anyway once I'm done with retouching I go file save output images uh, retain dynamic range uh, save as a TIFF 16 bits no compression save image put it wherever you desire I'll put it here I don't usually name the file uh, that's it exported I'm going to close the rain stacker and then open up Photoshop before I even do anything I'm going to duplicate the layer and then what I usually do is fix up some things like these bokeh balls don't really want those they're a bit distracting and what I'm using here is the healing brush tool I'm pressing alt to grab a bit by it like that and then enlarge it a little bit brush over it and it's gone but as you can see that's tidied it up a little bit it's more focused on the subject now I do a little bit of dodging and burning so I come into adjustments here and I usually check the levels first because sometimes I underexpose my image a little bit and I haven't realized but as you can see here on the histogram it's exposed properly so once I've removed any distracting elements with the healing brush tool I tend to start doing the dodging and burning process um, I don't do this to all images, it depends on the image. This image looks kind of fine, but I still like to brighten up the eyes and the important details. So I'll come into the curves tab and fo I'm focusing on the area that I'm brightening up. So I wanna brighten up the eyes. Um, do a curve that looks good, that looks good. And then control I to invert the mask. Go into the brush tool, use the white brush to paint over where I want to add the exposure. Now, as you can see, it's not adding too much of a change to the image, but it's the small details that make the image. And then there's some bits that are sort of a bit overexposed, like here and the back. So I like to come into the curves again and just bring down the mid-tones to highlights a tiny bit like that. Invert the mask, use the brush on white and just paint over those bright areas that I want to change. Now my goal when editing is to bring focus to the eyes of the subject. Um, so as you can see, I'm kind of darkening everything but the face. Now there are some elements I want to darken on the face. Um, I'll get to that in a second. And if it's not dark enough, I can come back into the adjustments. And there we go, that looks a bit better actually, slightly darker. Although this is a tiny bit overexposed, I think it looks good. And then sometimes I actually come into the levels adjustments and bring up the exposure a tiny bit in the highlights. Sometimes it needs that little bit of pop. I feel like that has just made it a lot better there. And that is pretty much it for exposure. Now what I'm gonna do is merge the duplicated layer with all that. So it's all in one place. And then I'm gonna duplicate that layer and start the sharpening process. So to sharpen, I'm gonna go filter, other, high pass, and what this basically is, is some sort of weird way of sharpening. Uh, I've just been using it for a couple of years and it's worked pretty well. So what you want to do, I usually do 1 to 1.5. Um, the aim is to get it just about visible. So as you can see, you can just about see it. Uh, I'm going to click OK. And then go into, yeah, this thing. <laughs> I don't know what it's called. Uh, and then click on Overlay. And I don't know if you can see it on the video, but that has drastically improved the sharpness. If you don't want that to apply to the background, you can mask it. So I usually mask the whole subject, or sometimes I only sharpen the face depending on what sort of effect I want. But right now I want this whole bug to be sharp. And then I'm just gonna merge those layers. Uh, so it's back in with the other adjustments. And that's pretty much it. Before I crop, I actually 
duplicate the layer into another tab so I can do a couple crops at a time. So what I usually do is do a crop for like full resolution. Um, and cropping is totally preference. But obviously there is some guidance like rule of thirds, but I do like a symmetrical image. So as you can see, I'm looking at this line here. That's the middle. And I want that central. And I'm gonna, I notice it's not really level. So I'm gonna rotate it a tiny bit. And that is central. So I'll click, okay. That is my full resolution crop. And then I usually do one for Instagram as well. So four by five and then crop in. And I also make another copy because with Instagram, I usually do a swipe thing. So four by five, and then I kind of like to get a nice tight shot like that for the front picture. And then for the side pictures, the swipe ones, I do eight by five on the crop and then crop in like that. Duplicate that in another tab. And what I'm gonna do is do a four by five crop to the left and a four by five crop to the right. And that is making that swipeable thing you see on Instagram a lot. And then export wise, I'm gonna export the full resolution one first. So um, I, do, I clicked Control, Shift, Alt, W there, which is a shortcut. Uh, keep convert to sRGB, enable, no, embed color profile. And then all I do is just put the quality to high, the highest on JPEG, and that's basically it. And export that into whatever folder. I'm just going to put it into this focus stacking folder here. I'm just going to call it um, Crab Spider. And then for the Instagram ones, I like to, Instagram usually compresses the images a lot and I used to resize them, like downsize them, but I found out that recently it kind of works well just keeping it the same size. But I do like to go into filter, sharpen, and then click sharpen because I feel like it loses a bit of sharpness uploading them to Instagram and then same export settings, put on high. Um, and then I usually make like an Instagram folder, but for this demonstration, I'll just put IG. And then same for this as well, filter, sharpen. And I'll usually just put like a one at the end. So crab spider IG one. And then for the second image, I'll do crab spider IG two. So there's the final image. As you can see, I haven't done much time uh, retouching, so it's not perfect, but it's just for the demonstration of this YouTube video. If I do end up doing some retouching outside of this video on the same image, I'll put that on screen now uh, so you can see what our final sort of product would look like after uh, a lot of retouching. But anyway guys, that's uh, it for today's video. I hope um, I taught you something about Zareen Stacker and my sort of editing process. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure to leave a like, subscribe, share, comment, all that stuff. And um, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.